Hello, bonjour, San Bonani. Welcome, welcome to Rise to Greater Heights Network, where you can turn your fears into greater success while seizing new opportunities. It is so significant to have a positive mindset, more especially under these circumstances. So this network has the potential to completely revolutionize every aspect of your life and career. My name is Dr. Riel and Gunene, and I'm going to be your host for today. So if you're watching us online, please feel free to put in the chat box where you're watching us from and what you hope to achieve from our podcast. Today, we are surrounded by greatness in the worldwide web. We have an amazing speaker who's going to share some nuggets gets on effective leadership, effective leadership. So in North Carolina, I know she's a club trotter, but we have uh, Her Excellency Dr. Teresa A. Mosley. So at this moment, I'll just let um, uh, our speaker to introduce herself. You can go ahead, um, Dr. Teresa. Hola, como estas? Bonjour, como talibus? And hello, how are you? I am Her Excellency Dr. Teresa Ann Mosley. I'm a United States Army veteran. I'm a Walmi United Nations Peace Ambassador, a retired educator after 28 years of service. I am a 13 time best selling author and three time international best selling author. And I am a world traveler. I'm also a transformational leader. I was a high school principal for five years. I was in leadership in schools forever. And I would love to share you today the tenets of transformational leadership that I learned through Bernard Bass's works. Wow, wow, you see, she wears different, many, many hats and she's still here. It's, it's such a great honor and a privilege to have you, uh, Dr. Teresa, with us on this platform. And I am really, really looking forward to hear more of your message. But before we get started, I just have a quick question for you. I have a question for you. If you happen to have your own billboard, I can see your billboard. I don't know where your billboard is gonna be because you're all over the world, but what will your billboard say? My billboard would say, no more violence, one city, one state, one nation at a time. Wow, wow. Now you can really, really tell that this one is a peace ambassador, no more violence. One, one city, one? One state, one nation at a time. Wow, 
Wow, I love that. I love that. And I, I, I believe uh, my billboard will say that, you know what, the sky is no longer the limit. As, as much as is, there is no violence, no, uh, no whatsoever, the sky is no longer the limit. So we've got this. We've, we've got this to sustain our peace. We've got this to do whatsoever we put our mindset into because the sky is no longer the limit, but it's our point of view. So we're all called to rise to greater heights. And it's definitely coming. It's definitely coming. So we're going to get started. Uh, we're going to get started with Her Excellency, Her Excellency Dr. Teresa A. Mosley. Uh, she is a uh, United Nations Peace Ambassador, the United States uh, Army veteran, inspirational and motivational speaker. She, Like she mentioned that she's a 12 times best-selling author, three times international best-selling author, three times award-winning educator. And she mentioned that she's retired, but I'm just looking at her face and thinking of retired. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, <laughs> age is just a number in this situation. 65. So, Dr. Mosley. I admit it. I'm 65. No, don't even yes. mention it. <laughs> no. And like, you look like you're in your, in your late 40s. <laughs> See? Yeah. <laughs> wow, wow. So Dr. Mosley is the owner and uh, the chief, chief executive officer of uh, TAM Creating Ambassadors of Peace LLC. And her company provides professional development on creating a positive climate. She also provides um, a professional development professional development on transformational leadership. And uh, as a published author, she writes positive messages on her uh, books about peace, hope, love, and purpose. So Dr. Mosley uses her life experiences to address thought-provoking uh, questions about finding one's purpose in life. And uh, she is very overt regarding everyone taking responsibility for creating a peaceful, peaceful world. So kings and queens, please join me and welcome Her Excellency, Excellency Dr. Teresa A. Mosel. The stage is yours, uh, Dr. Teresa. Thank you. So it's so important for everyone to know that you're here with a divine assignment. You're here because your destiny was predetermined. And when you figure out what your destiny is, what your fate is, it will lead to a legacy. And that's what you wanna do. When you wanna leave this earth, you wanna leave with a legacy. I learned early on that I was born a leader. I was in the military. My very first day of basic training, I led my company into building 40 wardrobes in less than four hours. You know, I was a Girl Scout leading my Girl Scout troop. I, I was in education for 28 years, leading my parents and students and teachers. And so what I learned is there, there are four tenets of, of leadership, transformational leadership that I use to maximize the potential for my employees once I was in the school system. And that is inspirational motivation idealized influence, intellectual stimulation. And let me tell you why all of these are important. If you can't motivate your employees, they won't be able to produce what you want them to produce. And also it's very important that leaders know who their individuals are in the organization. If you know their strengths and weaknesses, you can build upon their strengths, not upon their weaknesses. You don't want to to be an I gotcha leader. You want to be able to build them so that they can produce for your organization, be it a school, a Fortune 500 company. So one of the first things that a leader should do is make sure the vision and mission is developed by the team. Yes, you might have your own vision that you come into the organization with, but it's very important to be inclusive, include everybody in developing that vision and then aligning that mission with the vision. Make sure that you also look at your core values and beliefs and identify six to eight core values that you all believe in. And then when you meet with them on a regular basis, refer back to that vision, refer back to that mission. And any kind of conflict in the organization can be resolved if you go back to what it is that you want to do in the first place. That's so important. It's also important to give everybody individual consideration. Everybody does not need the same treatment, no. 
you, you have to treat people based upon their needs. For example, I'm the kind of person, just tell me what to do and I'll get it done. I don't need direct supervision. You don't have to call me and say, Teresa, I'm gonna remind you, girl, no, I got this. Some people, I'm a transformational leader, which is inclusive, but I might have an employee that needs direct supervision. Um, we needed to have this report done yesterday. It's still not done yet. Where are you at with this report? Okay, it's now day five. This report was supposed to be done yesterday. They might need some direct supervision. So it's important to know that even though you might be a transformational leader, sometimes you have to be inclusive and have other leadership styles depending upon the individual. Uh, I talk often about, um, <laughs> I never write people off, a young person, a young teacher that um, used to come to work late every day. And, you know, I didn't, I was a new principal. I, I was just got there and I couldn't figure out why she could, does she have a dog she has to take out? Is she sick? There's something going on. And she said, um, you know, I can get to work on time. I said, well, you need to get to work on time tomorrow. And the next day she was late. But once again, I didn't write her off. I said, listen, you're late again today. You know, what's going on? Can you tell me why you're getting to work late? Because your students are missing 45 minutes of instruction and your best friend is covering your class. And she says, I, I can get to work on time. And the next day she was late. So I said, okay, let me switch this up. So I said, write down three things you can do to get to work on time. And she wrote down three things. I said, oh, this is amazing. Yes, implement this tonight and tomorrow morning and get to work on time. And she got to work on time the next day and the next week and the next month. And so I was so happy that she was coming to work on time and then, I went by our classroom to say, hi, how you doing? She says, can I talk to you for a second? And I said, yes, I said, what's going on? And she says, I wanna tell you the truth of why I wasn't getting to work on time. And then she told me because nobody else ever held me accountable. Wow, I kind of knew that in my heart, but I'm so glad I didn't write her off because she was a great teacher. She was brilliant. She just needed to get to work on time. And that's why I say you need to give them individual consideration, you know, figure out what it is, and then everything will work out. Also, intellectual stimulation. If you're in an organization, you need to know everybody's job. <laughs> you might not be the expert in everybody's job. That's why you hire people that have strengths in different areas, but you need to know what they know so you can build their capacity, you know, and also have them, give them the opportunity to critically think. When you have problems, sometimes a leader likes to come in with a solution. Don't always come in with the solution. Give your team the autonomy to figure out what it is we need to do. I often tell the example of educators have to score benchmarks and they don't have enough time to score benchmarks during the day because they have their class and they have their collaborative planning. So one day I said, okay, you guys need more time to score benchmarks? I'll take your students, all 250 in the auditorium, and then you guys can go into your team and score the benchmarks. And we did that for three days, but it wasn't a timeout for the students. I actually taught them how to write a five paragraph essay and how to score it based upon a rubric. So they had some education during those three days and the teachers got time to analyze data, data, triangulate data to figure out what it is that the kids did not know in that particular content area. Again, you know, intellectual simulation. You have to give the teachers, you have to know what they know so that you can help them maximize their potential in the classroom. Leadership is also so important because you need to understand the, the mindset of the individuals in the organization. How many people get terminated and go back and blow up the building? See, this is all about peace now. How many people are angry at work or don't trust their leader at work or supervisor and they go home and then they're angry with the kids and the wife or the husband or road rage? That's why it's so important to get to know the individuals in your company. So if there's somebody out there that's struggling with something, that you can provide them the resources, that you can get them the help that they needed. You know, so often there's so much violence in the workplace. And then I think about, did anybody know that that person was violent? Did anybody really address those anger issues with that person? I'm not saying that the leader needs to give the treatment, but definitely you need to have some resources along the way to help people that are struggling with things, especially if it's if it's something dealing with um, mental or emotional abuse. That's so important. 
Um, I learned a long time ago that my gift was my voice, my passion was serving others, and my purpose was to make this world a more peaceful place. Unfortunately, I lost two students to violence. Um, one kid was shot to death. He was a brilliant football player. And another kid was beat to death in a park. And I pray a lot. I do a lot of praying. I, I also do a lot of traveling. I remember praying on a mountain in Palma de Mallorca um, this summer. And there was a mountain and there was the ocean and I was in this trance and I was like, God, continue to guide me into, into the path to make this world a better place, a more peaceful place. And so when I went to this master's class, I said out loud that my gift is my voice and my gift of intuition. My passion is serving others. I served others in the army. I served others as a Girl Scout. I served others in the school system. And my purpose is to make this world a more peaceful place. So if I can train leaders to have a positive culture, if I can train leaders to get to know the individuals in their organization to make sure that they're at peace, then I'm doing my part. You know, I'm, I'm living out my destiny, which will lead to my legacy, my legacy in writing books, my legacy in delivering speeches, my le the legacy in touching people that need to be touched so that they can know that, listen, you have to be aware of self. You have a divine assignment. Don't get it twisted. Everybody is here for a specific reason. And once you figure that out, oh my goodness, you will be successful, you will be fulfilled, you will be prosperous, and you'll have inner peace. See, I have this ikigai philosophy. It's a Japanese philosophy on purpose. If the world needs it, and that's something that you're good at, that's your mission in life. If you really love to do something, that's your passion. But if the world needs it, you're passionate about it, and you work that job from nine to five or 10 to two, whatever, then that is your purpose. That will lead to success, that will lead to fulfillment, that will lead to prosperity and inner peace. And that's where you want to be. You want to know what your destiny is so that you can create that legacy. And so let me put this in perspective. When you're a child, that's why I love your topic, Rise to Greater Heights, because I think everybody can rise to greater heights if they live in their divine assignment. And so as a child, when a child is born, there's no open slate. That child is born with a gift. You have to find out what it is and nurture that gift. One of the first virtues a child learns is the virtue of hope. If I cry, I hope they feed me, change me, or hold me if I'm cold. But if you do not take care of that need, they don't learn to trust. When a child doesn't learn to trust, they can't love. The opposite of love is hate. So even a newborn baby, a two-year-old, a three-year-old, it's our responsibility, the parent, the caregiver, whoever is around that child, the educator, to find out what that gift is and nurture it so that they can rise to greater heights. I know what I'm talking about because I saw it in education. The second thing is when you leave school and you go into college, now you have another uh, environment. You know, you have your college friends, you have your college professors. Hopefully by that time, you've kind of figured out what it is that you want to do. And then once you go into the world of work, it's up to the leader to make sure that your goals are met. It's up to the leader to make sure that you're safe. It's up to the leader to make sure that you understand the vision and mission of that organization so that you can be an integral part of that success of that company. And everything that I do revolves around peace, peace in that organization because of effective leadership. In fact, I'm writing a book called The Essential Soft Skills of Effective Leadership, Steps to Leading with Grace. I talk about communication, empathy, um, problem solving, time management, integrity, which is so important, creativity, adaptability. All of these things are so important. Many people can teach hard skills. They can teach you how to sell, but they struggle with soft skills. And soft skills is something that I think that all leaders need to have in order to have a successful organization. 
Wow, 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 Dr. Teresa, oh my goodness. Like I was just taking notes on each and every, every point that you are sharing with us. We've started, uh, we've started saying that we, we should actually, we should motivate our own employees to be as effective as they can be in that business because vision and mission is developed by the team. So our employees are also part of the team. And I, I just like the way you 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 held um, your one of your uh, team members accountable. And then she came back to you and then she appreciated you for, you know, just spotting that moment that, okay, you always show up maybe a few minutes later at work, why is this happening? And you see the moment you, you confront the situation as is, that's when you, you'll find the answers. And you kept going on and on, you see, like you, you speak of peace, you speak my language when you speak peace, because I believe that, you know, the change that we really want to see in this world, it doesn't start with that neighbor, it doesn't start with that friend, it start with me being the change that I want to see. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Teresa, for such a profound, much needed message around uh, effective leadership. Thank you. So to our audience online, to our audience online, if you happen to have any questions for um, Her Excellency, please feel free to drop those questions in the chat box and we're gonna attend to your questions at the end of the podcast. So we're gonna move to Mrs. CP. I can see we have um, Ms. Constance uh, with us here. So I'm just gonna read her bio before she just jump in and, um, and speak. So Constance Willard is a professional speaker. She's a visionary nursing leader, mindset coach, and a 12 times best-selling author. You know, I'm, I'm being challenged by these amazing authors. Uh, Dr. Teresa, she's also a 12 times best-selling author. And uh, here comes uh, uh, Ms. Constance, same, 12 times best-selling author. So she collaborated with Dr. Cheryl Wood and uh, the legendary Les Brown in the Unleashing Your Undenied Impact, which was an anthology. So Ms. Willard is uh, a featured author of The Heart of a Leader. She is dedicated to motivating and empowering others to be their best. So Ms. Willard is also a featured speaker with the WYN conferences, Women Influencers, and Women's Leadership Conference in Dubai, UAE. So she's a native of uh, Gulfport, Mississippi. Ms. Uh, Willard has held numerous key leadership roles over the past 30 years. And her focus as a visionary leader is to develop nursing, nursing leaders in preparation of the future of nursing leadership. So Ms. Willard is a subject matter expert on leadership issues such as uh, team building, effective communication, working with diverse generations in our uh, workplace and diversity and inclusion. She has also received her bachelor's uh, in sci of science in nursing and a master's degree on, uh, in nursing education from William Carey University. Recognized as one of the 100 fearless women in 2023 and also a uh, presidential lifetime achievement honoree. So she provides home cooked meals to a uh, veteran's um, assistant living facility every Sunday. Wow, wow. And her mantra is to whom much is given, much is required. So kings and queens, please join me and welcome Constance Willard. And good morning. I'm sorry, but my camera's off because I'm inside of a correctional facility. So I apologize, but I wanted to join this call. But I was nominated as the podcaster of the year. And the mission and the vision for my podcast is to educate and to elevate. And when I say educate, it means to educate the public on things that they need and should be aware of. And for anybody who is aspiring to do the same, my podcast serves as a platform for them to come along and to partner and to educate and to elevate. And I firmly believe that when you are given much, be it financially, be it spiritually, okay, be it just knowledge, whatever it is you have been blessed with, it is so important. 
and necessary that we share. I mean, it's just a requirement. It's a calling on our life. And I believe that that's the calling on my life. The calling on my life is to educate and to elevate and inspire others. And so I am just honored to have been nominated for this award. Um, I was really shocked, but I'm, I, I, I just love serving others. And like Dr. Teresa said earlier, you know, she, through the Girl Scouts, the military, so forth. Well, I wasn't in the military and my tenure with the Girl Scouts was very limited, about two weeks. But I have been a servant in other areas as a healthcare provider, as a professional caregiver, as a personal caregiver. In my church, as I educate others, youth coming up, and in my workplace as a leader, I develop other leaders. And so that is what is important to me. That is the calling on my life, and that is what I strive to do each and every day. Thank you so much. I cannot hear you. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I, I always do this. I, I always do it is like to jump in because, you know, I've been pumped. I've been pumped. I'm saying thank you so much for such a brief but profound message around leadership. I, like, I love your mantra, by the way, that to whom is given and uh, much is required. So that, that's a sign of leadership. That's a sign of leadership, really. And it's such an honor to have you as one of the finalists. It's such an honor to have you on this platform with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. Uh, Dr. Teresa, uh, if you can please share with the audience on how they can reach out to you, how they can work with you, if you have uh, any any freebie, any freebie, any complimentary for the audience, please feel free to share with, uh, with the audience. Yes. yes, you can reach out to me. It's one-stop shopping at creatingambassadorsofpeace.com. This is my website. It links to all of my social media sites, my YouTube channel, my Instagram, um, my speaker hub. And on the very first page, you can schedule a 30 minute free consultation with me. I can talk to you about whatever it is that you need, whether it's self help or working with your organization, I will give you a free 30 minute consultation. If you go to the first page of my website. Once again, that's small letters creating ambassadors of peace.com. You can also see my books. I actually have 16 books and 13 bestsellers. There's a breadcrumb for my bookstore, um, for my upcoming events, um, and also a media page is from some of my former speeches and in an apparel shop. Yes. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so thank you so much, um, to, to Teresa. And uh, our audience, definitely go out there and reach out to this amazing, amazing speaker and uh, try and get as much as you can with the books, because I believe that knowledge is power. The way she's passing on her legacy from the first book to the 13th book, it means that there is so much knowledge that you can just acquire from her. So thank you so much, Dr. Teresa. Very welcome. You can, you can also go ahead, uh, Ms. Costens, and please share with the audience how they can reach out to you, how they can work with you, any freebie that you wanna offer. Let's see. Well, I think she's muted. You know what? We're going to come back uh, to Ms. Constance um, towards the end of the podcast. So what I'm going to do, it's not a show without me showing up. So I'm going to be the next speaker. But before I speak, uh, here's what I will do. I'm going to um, I'm going to share my bio with you and then I will come back and speak. So please enjoy. <music> I want you, as you think about your dreams and goals, to put this down. Rise to greater heights. Rise to greater heights. Because you need to be clear about, about your career goals in order for you to gain guidance on professional development. Really, my goal as a mentor or, or, or as a coach is so simple. My goal is to study your current situation, identify limiting beliefs and other potential obstacles that you might be facing, and then design a plan of inspired action to empower you to 
I think whosoever say that the sky is the limit was wrong. From today on, I, Dr. Riel and Kunene, believe that the sky is our point of view. Mom. So I think whosoever say that the sky is the, the limit was wrong. From today on, I, Dr. Riel and Kunene, believe that the sky is our point of view. So let's all rise to greater heights. of you so let's all rise to greater heights rise to greater heights dr nam pumalelo real kunene is an international human rights policy analyst who consults on policies and procedures related to human rights compliance she is a highly sought after energetic certified lace brown international speaker this passionate leader holds a PhD with a discipline in leadership and business. Dr. Rial N. Kunene is the author and host to Rise to Greater Heights, a book and YouTube channel to turn your fears into greater success while seizing new opportunities. She is also a coach, mentor, and an MC, well known for encouraging many to rise from mediocrity into greatness. Her vision is not only to motivate, but also to empower audiences with a fresh perspective inspiration they require to pursue success and drive sustainable outcomes. In a seriously funny way, Dr. Kunene is an award-winning author. Ten times number one Amazon and international best-selling author, her number one best-selling book, Rise to Greater Heights, has inspired and empowered many to pursue their personal and professional passion to become go-getters. As a trainer, diplomacy protocol officer, and strategist, Rial believes that we are in full control of our choices. Her mission is to meet the needs and transform lives of her clients and her audience. She is also a true advocate for creating new policies that uphold human rights and prevent human rights violations. Dr. Kunene's purpose is to teach everyone about human rights and help organizations understand and promote human rights. Her goal is to study your current situation, identify limiting beliefs, then design a plan of inspired action to empower you to achieve specific outcomes in your life. This change maker, trailblazer, and revolutionary is pushing boundaries and creating a real change worldwide. Like a phoenix that never accepted defeat and rose from its own ashes, she wants to challenge you to unleash your greatness and rise to greater heights. Dr. Rial N. Kunene wears many hats. As a professional certified sales manager, CEO, certified travel counselor, publisher, medical aesthetician, philanthropist, and a commissioner for oaths, following her dreams gave her purpose to see her goals through and understand that she does have everything she needs to reach her full potential. Her everyday message is that your journey to be a better person starts with you. So knowing who you are to your core will make you understand that you are the only one who can accomplish your dreams. Hebrews 11, Psalms 27 and 40 keeps her to rise to greater heights. The sky is no longer the limit, but now the sky is our point of view. So let's all rise to greater heights. Kings and queens, please join me. Welcome, Dr. Rial N. Kunene. Wow, wow. You know, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, um, uh, amazing speakers. Like uh, when I was just listening to your messages, I was just filled with goosebumps. I'm like, you know, like Dr. Teresa, she mentioned that uh, we'll have to motivate our employees in order for them to be as effective as much as uh, they can because vision and mission is being built upon that team. Um, vision and mission of your organization is developed by the, that team that you are actually leading. And then uh, I, I like uh, the way uh, Constanza mentioned her mantra that uh, to whom much is given, much is required, of which means in everything that we really do, we'll have to put on the work. We'll have to put it in. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share more nuggets around um, the attributes of effective leadership. I'm gonna touch on uh, on uh, the vision, uh, the purpose uh, of uh, 
leadership as a leader, because uh, as um, a great leader, as you, as you may know, great leaders, they always have a vision. And not only does a good leader view a situation as a whole, but they are kind of passionate about their work and they are committed uh, and uh, are committed enough to achieve positive, positive results at any given cost. That's a leader. That's a true definition of a leader to me. They can take a risk for whatsoever they really want to achieve. So effective leaders, when challenged, they don't give in too easily, but they, they always have an exciting idea of where they are going and what they are trying to accomplish. That's uh, a leader. And leaders uh, should also be like uh, self-driven. If you if you are a leader and you want to go far in life, you'll have to be self-driven because such dedication is required since it instills a sense of responsibility. A sense of responsibility in the team, team members that you are leading in order for them to work harder in wanting to achieve uh, better results for your company, for the company, for that organization. Like uh, good people, you really don't have to see the whole staircase in life for you to get to the top, but you need to take the first step to get to the top. As my mentor always say that you don't have to be great to get started but you'll have to get started to become great in life. So get started today and uh, apply these leadership traits that all these amazing speakers have shared today because it will take you far in your leadership role in that organization. It's going to take you, take you far. And honesty and integrity, these are supreme quality of leadership. The supreme quality of leadership is unquestionable integrity because great leaders they always always exhibit integrity at all times without it there would be no real success uh, that that would be possible if you're not honest about what you're doing if you don't have integrity within yourself there will be no real success around whatsoever you are doing. So remember to lead by example as a leader. Make sure that your organization also reinforces the importance of integrity at all times to the leaders at various levels to see how fair can one be when everyone uh, around them is being dishonest. So honesty and integrity is uh, one of the traits that each and every leader in any given organization should be able to to uh, present. And another attribute of effective leadership is also based on decision making, decision making capabilities, because a good leader isn't simple empowered to make decisions due to their position. But uh, economy goes uh, on to recognize that great leaders know their limits and they involve other voices and perspectives into their leadership making, I mean into their decision making. So all leaders must occasionally make difficult decisions, decisions, you know, decisions that will require an authority and finality that will not please everyone around them. But uh, they will still stick with their the, with, with their rules and their ground. So it's a wake up call, good people. All these amazing speakers have shared uh, more nuggets on how you can actually build that effective leadership. So it's a wake up call. But when that alarm clock goes off, please, 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 don't ever hit the snooze button. Don't be like, I will wake up in the next two minutes. I will wake up in the next four minutes. You know what? Forever is a long time. Why don't you wake up, get going, and apply all these leadership skills that we are sharing about today? So you love to be creative. You love to be creative as a leader because creativity and innovation can take you far in that leadership role. As a good leader, you must be ready to kind of transform your creative spirit into an innovation that sets you apart from the rest. So if it's it's up to you, it's really up to you to think outside the box when any issues arise around you. The thing that separates a leader from a follower is that a good leader is creative and they are innovative for, for them to come up with uh, the unique ideas and turn those ideas and goals into, into a reality. So be creative as much as you can. So in order for you to join the elite club of good leaders, you need to focus on results, on results on what must be achieved by you as well as your team. 
that's when creativity steps in. So kings and queens, let's just be honest about ourselves. You can't give from an empty cup. You really can't give from an empty cup. But what you need to do as a leader, you'll have to fill up your cup first. Fill up your cup first. And then from the overflow, then you can share with the world. Then you can empower others. But you, you really can't give from an empty cup. So fill that cup first. And then from your overflow, you're going to be able to share with the world. Because a leader is not the one who has secured a, a commanding position in, in that firm. But you must have all these qualities to, for, in order for you to focus on the needs of the company and the situation because great leaders really they focus on strengths in themselves and in others why i'm glad you asked that because uh, if you lack some of these qualities that i've shared today then you might be struggling to make the mark in the world of leadership so apply all these attributes that i have shared with you today in order for you to make it into this edit club of great leaders in, in the whole entire world. Because my everyday inspiration is the Les Brown, he once said, if you had to die today, at this very moment, at this hour, what dreams, what ideas, what visions, what goals, what skills, what talents, and what books will die with you? And the late Dr. Miles Mondro continued saying that the richest place on this planet is the cemetery, because that's where all the goals, all the visions, all the talents, all the skills have been buried. Honestly, I don't know about you, but with me, I remember it very well when I first started writing my first book, uh, Rise to Greater Heights, and now I lost the count when I got to 10. I, I, I told myself that, you know what, I have everything around me to reach, my, uh, to, to reach to my full potential. So it's high time. It's now or never. Let me rise to greater heights, which gave me a purpose to see my goals through and uh, understand that I do have everything around me to reach my full potential. So this year, I'm also um, so determined as much as I can to rise to greater heights with as many, as many motivated professionals who maybe they are ready to start grow uh, to grow uh, start grow and scale their businesses within ninety days, or perhaps you just want to write and publish that number one best selling book within ninety days. Trust me, I just want to rise to greater heights with you. If you are listening and watching under my voice, I offer a free, no obligation, thirty minutes friendly Zoom call uh, that will just help me to understand about the issues that you are experiencing and also see that you are a perfect fit for any of my programs that I offer because I don't work with everyone, but I just work with um, those individuals who that I feel like we are perf a, a perfect fit for each other because uh, I'll have to uh, fulfill your your promise my promises to you and you also have to be satisfied with my service. That's the reason why I always stick with that because um, uh, I believe that you know the sky is no longer the limit for everyone. So let's get started. Yeah, that, let's get started. So if you're interested in, in, in becoming a public speaker, an author, a coach, or maybe that entrepreneur who wants to multiply your income by doing what you love and making a real impact out there, please book that call with me. It's a free consultation, no obligation Zoom call that we're going to just go over it because I really want to empower you to become highly effective and an inspiring leader with a kind of uh, personalized, measurable, but a scalable program. So book that call at www.risetogreaterheights.com. And yes, mine, it comes with a guarantee. I know there are many out there who will promise you this and that, but they will fail to fulfill those promises. So mine, it comes with a guarantee because my ultimate goal is that you feel extremely confident about your purpose. So we'll take it one step at a time and you are definitely, definitely, definitely going to transform. So if you give me your why, I'll show you the how. So uh, go out there and book that call with me. And you might have to ask, why am I doing this? Why are you doing this now? Because you know what? I've been there, I've done that, and I know how it feels like. I remember myself like five years ago, I was uh, completely, completely lost in the hustle. I was um, overwhelmed. I was uh, exhausted. And I remember I had a ton of ideas, but there was no 
tried and true strategy that will run with it. So it was only when I invested in coaching and then I created my first premium offer, then things started to, uh, started to change uh, in my business. And then I, I built an income generating business, just doing what I truly love and making a real impact out there. So I just want you to do this. I want you to do the same. Uh, I, I will kind of guide you through how I got to where I am today. So now it's your turn. It's your turn to build your wealth because the power is inside of you. Go out there once again at www.risetogreaterheights.com and book that free consultation call. When you get to my website, just scroll all the way to the bottom of the page and then uh, click on book a consultation call with me. Because, you know, growing up, I didn't have much in life because my father decided to have an early departure from this planet Earth. And I thank God that I missed that flight because I'm still here. I'm still sharing my message. I'm still impacting as many lives as I can because I had everything because of my mama's love. So I think also ever say that the sky is the limit was wrong. From today on, I, Dr. Riel and Gunene believe that the sky is our point of view. So let's all rise to greater heights. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, amazing speakers. So at this moment, um, uh, uh, Your Excellency, Dr. Teresa, please feel free to share your final thoughts on effective leadership. And once again, please share with the audience how they can reach out to you, how they can work with you. Uh, same thing with uh, you, Ms. Costance. If you are still there, if you can hear me, please share with the audience how they can reach out to you. Uh, Your Excellency, the stage is yours. You are muted. Gotcha. Once again, as a transformational leader, thank you. I use the tenets of uh, Bernard Bass, which is idealized influence, inspirational motivation, um, individual stimulation, and um, active intellectual stimulation. And also, I want to leave you with my final thoughts, and that is life. Life is but a short road to our ultimate destiny. Make peace have compassion, and learn to love before you get there. Peace and blessings. Constance? Okay, I couldn't hear her because she's muted. But anyway, um, my final thoughts for today is, it's all about leading and guiding others. And as we lead and we guide others, we also benefit because we learn too. We learn some lessons. We learn some things about ourselves sometimes that we didn't realize. And we also find ways that we can improve upon the craft that we've been blessed with. And so as Dr. Teresa said, life, I look at life as a train ride. We only ride this train once. And when we get off, we cannot get back on again. So make the most of every day. Appreciate every moment. Appreciate those that are around you. Treasure everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the indifferent, because they all have a purpose. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Constance. Thank you so, so much, Dr. Teresa, for, like, for being with us. I know like uh, 90 minutes to be on this platform. Yeah, like I could have done this. I could have done that. But for you just to spare that 90 minutes to be with us here today, it means the world to us. So we appreciate both of you. And your message is really, they resonate with me. And I believe they will resonate with many, many uh, of our audience here. So thank you so much for, for sharing such a, a profound message with us here at Rise to Create a Heights Network. Thank you. And to our audience online, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us here at Rise to Greater Heights. I can see Mariah watching, Benoit watching, Anna Lee watching, and uh, Jarvis is saying good morning. Uh, um, Mariah is saying accountability is key. And um, Jarvis is saying again, great words, uh, Dr. Teresa, and mostly word divine assignment. 
And I can see Tela is also watching and Princess is saying that rise, Queens, rise. So I believe that our audience have been inspired, they've been motivated. And you know, with all these messages that you've shared today, they're gonna apply it to themselves. So we appreciate, we appreciate you amazing speakers. Thank you. And to our audience online, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, I can see Carol, Robert, she just joined. Uh, to our audience online, thank you so much for joining us here at Rise to Greater Heights Network, where you can turn your fears into greater success while seizing new opportunities. I hope from all these messages uh, uh, from these amazing speakers, you've been inspired, you've been motivated and you are ready to rise to greater heights. So do join us next week at the same time, same place. Thank you. Merci. See ya. Bonga. Let him love, let him weep, let him yell, let him sing. Only one I say. Let him leave me traps and men to pray to Jehovah me, I pray. Let him love, let him weep, let him yell, let him sing. Only one I say. Let him leave me traps and men to pray to Jehovah me, I pray. Let I be me instead of playing games For chasing fame, let somebody spread the lack of flames no Living my life to the fullest And shout out my halala to the fullest Let my lungs out I'm still rising up to greater highs As long as I'm